Hello, true believers. High Definition here, and this is a breakdown of the latest trailer for the Marvel Midnight Suns game. We'll also be going over the story details and comic book origins for the game. Following Jeff Keighley's 2022 Summer Games Fest, we were treated to not just a brand new trailer, but also tons of gameplay from big Marvel and strategy content creators. Wow, how many times am I gonna say game in this video? Let me know your guess down below. That new trailer though, well, it gave us new glimpses at the roster we'll be playing with, but it also points a much clearer picture on the motivations of the villains in the game. You can also say the trailer we got around August of 2021 makes a bit more sense now, even though the cool factor itself may have been the biggest selling point back then. I'm not sure we even knew Midnight Suns would be a card game at that point. Anyway, I'd also say we can possibly put together the general story from start to finish as well down to the game's possible plot points. So join me as we take a deep dive into a ton of Marvel Midnight Suns content, breaking down multiple story details for the game. We'll also be discussing the roots of the source material it's based on and how that story compares to what we'll be experiencing in October. Whether you've never read the source material or didn't keep up with the Game Informer articles showcasing the game last year, you should actually learn something here today. I did a lot of research for information on this video and found rare footage as well. So before we get to the rest of the video, remember that you can support this channel by simply dropping a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell for similar analysis videos of our favorite superhero video games. With that, Let's start analyzing the trailer from this year's Game Awards titled Darkness Falls. Roll the clip! In this trailer, we're first introduced with the song Master of Puppets by Metallica, a song we had to slightly alter due to obvious YouTube copyright. Anyway, as the name of the song suggests, the theme seems to fit perfectly with the poster villain of the game, Lilith. With the idea of being a master of puppets to our faceless minions and even corrupted Marvel characters. More on all that later in this video. <music> Moving a bit further, we see the well known Marvel logo transition into the Midnight Suns logo, but we also see these strange glyphs all over the screen. Like, what is that? Well, the genius that I'm not took to the Google Lens app search feature and discovered that these are none other than the alchemical symbols. You can see such things that mean such things as alum, copper, amalgamation, alkali, and a bunch of other symbols that I couldn't find on other alchemy tables. Now, while the appearance of these symbols in Midnight Suns isn't exactly 100% clear, some further research gave me some subtle hints as to what it could be. To be quick, alchemy originated in the early centuries AD from Egypt, Greece, and Rome. Sources say alchemists that used alchemy symbols like these had three goals in mind. These goals were creating the Philosopher's Stone, a legendary substance said to be capable of transforming lead into gold and giving the user eternal life, creating an elixir of eternal youth and health, and transmuting metals specifically into gold, which I'm sure fans of Full Metal Alchemist would be all familiar with. Anyway, with these goals in mind, we can assume this has to do with our heroes resurrecting our main character, the Hunter, a character that is said to have been around during the Salem Witch Trials and has been dead for a long time. We see this resurrection seemingly being simulated here as the Midnight Suns logo transitions into the 2K logo and the circling effect before it dissipates into the Firaxis Games logo. Almost like we'll see Doctor Strange doing with Nico Minoru in the game's introduction moments and even in the game's first teaser trailer last year. Moving on. Oh, our favorite alien symbiote Venom can be seen in the next shot making a snack out of what appears to be the Lillen. As Game Informer described them in their 2021 article, these are simply nothing but a horde of faceless and nameless minions. We also see these same enemies in the intro fights of the game, with that video footage being spread out pretty scarcely on the internet. Moving on. Here we see the advertised villain that I mentioned earlier, Lilith. 
the dead giveaway being the green flames initially trying to grab Venom in these shots. As we move forward a bit, we can see that we're witnessing Lilith's main weapon in Midnight Suns. Marvel heroes and villains alike being corrupted into dark beings. You can even spot some of this transformation in the shot panning up from the green flames. In that Game Informer article I mentioned earlier, the developer said that these dark characters are known as the Fallen and have been corrupted by Lilith, even bending to her will. In the source material, the Fallen would be minions of the demon Zarathos. Now, if you're skeptical if Lilith is as powerful as described, the developers also mentioned that Lilith is Thanos, Apocalypse, Ultron, or Doom, and then some. Not only does she have godlike powers that grow stronger every day, she has an unending army of demons at her disposal, but with a single touch, Lilith can also corrupt and command any villain or hero in the Marvel Universe. Moving on. There, there, my sweet child. Mother won't hurt you. In this dialogue, we get a bit more clarity on the mind of this villain. She's not a being that's necessarily trying to kill every enemy she sees, but she has an ulterior motive, instead choosing to corrupt them and make them into her children. Back in our Game Informer article, the director of narrative, Chad Rocco, said that your best villains in their mind are not evil, but they're doing something for good. Her motivations for her fall are actually very personal and very tragic. So it looks like our Hunter story will be just as personal, taking down their corrupted mother. Let's move on in our trailer though. Typical Parker luck. I'm gonna need some backup. Now, here we have my favorite character making an introduction, Spider-Man. I'm aware that this trailer likely isn't using footage from the game. It seems to be a sequence of story events that happens early in the game. More specifically, it should be one of our first main story missions after we get introduced to the Hunter and also the main hub area we'll be spending countless hours in. You can see this in the scarce gameplay clip scattered around online that I mentioned earlier. Moving on. Here, we get a nice promotional shot of some of the characters we'll be playing with. Even though the main characters behind Spidey have been seen before, this marks the first time Spider-Man has been shown in official capacity as a playable character. Again, this more than likely would not be a clip in the game, as it only gives us an idea of us making a superhero team of our choosing. Take the fact that there are six characters here and only three are actually allowed to join battles, and there you go. A detail that I do like here is the choice of music as well, giving off the vibes of a blockbuster MCU film. This characteristic holds true not just in the trailer, but early players of the game have said the game's banter between characters has the same hit or miss humor that we're used to in the Marvel films. I really showed up my homeowner's insurance. The dialogue looks actually right up my alley as a Marvel fan, and it's good to see that we'll be having a fun and personal adventure hanging out with our favorite characters. There's still more to the trailer though, so let's get back to it. In our promotional villain shot here, we see Lilith looking like a total boss next to a corrupted Venom from earlier. But we can also see a corrupted Scarlet Witch and what I'm guessing to the left may be Wolverine or Sabretooth. Let me know down below who you think that character in the left could be. Moving a little further ahead, we'll also spot a corrupted Hulk jump into the frame as well. Now, seeing how Venom and Hulk have not been confirmed in any capacity as playable characters, I wouldn't expect to be recruiting these big brutes in the base game, if at all. Moving on. work well it did that one time 
At the end of the trailer, we see Spider-Man ringing a bell at this tower trying to get Venom's attention, possibly following the promotional CG battle we witnessed just seconds ago in the trailer. This sequence of events also seems to follow the events of the game, as seen in early gameplay footage from other content creators. More specifically, the Fallen Venom boss fight some of us lost our minds about after that gameplay was shared. Now that the trailer's over, let's use all the Midnight Suns footage we've seen so far to figure out what the heck is going on with this bonkers game. I mean, we have Marvel characters being turned into Diablo bosses. Like, what is going on here? Well, jumping back over to our Game Informer article, the developers say that Lilith was once a warrior of light as the member of a race called the Blood. She is a descendant of the Elder Gods and fought the forces of darkness alongside her sister, Caretaker a person we actually meet in the early hours of the game. During the late 1600s, Lilith sold her soul to a corrupted evil elder god named Cthon in a moment of weakness. Scarlet Witch fans should know who that is. People that don't know should be in for a treat in this game. Anyway, they go on to say Cthon is so evil that he was banished to another dimension by his fellow gods billions of years ago. But he has kept his sights on returning to Earth ever since. This falls in line with the comic book source material in which prior to the fall of Atlantis, also billions of years in the past, the Atlanteans gained powers and access to the gods from the Dark Cold Books pages. These pages created by the demon Cthon would eventually be scattered in that story as well. Back to the article, they say that following the dark deal with Cthon in the game, Lilith is corrupted by the demon and she gives in to the darkness. She creates a monstrous demonic army known as the Lilin and wages war on humanity. According to the legend, this invasion becomes the heart of the Salem Witch Trials mentioned earlier. The only thing that stops her from her goals is a team of heroes known as the Midnight Suns led by the Hunter. Together, the team at that time defeated Lilith and sealed her away for centuries. The Midnight Suns hid her body and scattered the pages of the Darkhold across the planet which is an evil grimoire authored by Cthon, you know, for those who don't know. Back in the source material, the Dark Hole pages would also be eventually scattered as well. Back to the Midnight Suns game, the developers added that Hydra would be spending several hundred years hunting down the pages and searching for Lilith's tomb. At present day, they have one page left to find, and with the time of prophecy just moments away, they stumble upon Lilith's tomb. Hydra's Dr. Faustus and his team use a combination of the Dark Hold and Gamma Science to resurrect Lilith. But Lilith immediately subjugates the Hydra forces and takes control to again try and fulfill a prophecy. That prophecy being the Midnight Sun, where they hope to eventually summon Cthon to Earth and get a piece of that power. This is all experienced in the early parts of the game as well. This use of the dark magic would be noticed by Doctor Strange in which he would end up recruiting the Marvel roster that we see in the game. I personally see this prophecy as being the true end game for the Midnight Suns, which sounds pretty epic in my opinion. Just imagine the whole game we're so focused on stopping Lilith that we may get caught off guard when the Cthon ends up getting summoned in the present day. The source material for the Midnight Suns again follows a similar sequence of events, as the Doctor Strange here would also draft a loose knit group of mystically powered heroes in the present day to serve as mankind's first line of defense against Lilith and her children, the Lilin. But this would happen after Lilith eventually freed herself from the belly of an ancient beast known as the Leviathan, located in a section of northern Greenland known as the Land of the Midnight Sun. The comic book run for the Midnight Suns was one weird trip though, stuff full of gothic imagery and moments of our heroes being turned against each other due to Lilith's magic. Again, there are similarities in the game as well, with our many heroes and villains being corrupted and turned into the fallen in the game. As you see, it strikes many similarities to the comics, yet with its share of creative changes as well, similar to how the MCU makes adaptations of popular characters and storylines. While the characters in this game seem pretty much unchanged from their comic book counterparts, the story seems to be similar to the source material, yet seems to be making some entertaining and understandable changes for this modern era. The Midnight Suns game offers a selection of popular Marvel characters that are more well known today, since characters in the comics like the Night Stalkers and Dark Cold Redeemers have not yet been introduced in modern Marvel entertainment. I personally am pumped to create my Hunter and become best friends with Spider-Man and my other favorite characters, complete with engaging strategic gameplay and most of all, that modern Marvel humor.
Anyway, this question's for you though. Are you even more excited to play Midnight Suns now that the story and plot is more clear to you? Follow me on Twitter for superhero related tweets around the clock. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe to this channel, and ring the bell for more Midnight Suns content leading up to the game's release in October, plus much more Marvel content to keep you occupied until then. As always, thanks for watching if you have, and I'll see you all on the next video. Peace.